devices, all electronic devices to vibrate. Will all non-council employees, non-council employees, please leave the main floor of the chambers. There's additional sitting upstairs in the balcony. Thank you. Good afternoon and welcome to the stated meeting of January 24th, 2019. I am Majority Leader Lori Cumbo. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. Roll call. Adams. Present. Amprey Samuel. Present. Ayala. Present. Barron. Present. Borelli. Brannon. Cabrera. Here. Chin. Here. Cohen. Here. Constantinides. Carnegie. Presente. Deutsch. Here. Diaz. Presente. Drum. Present. Espinal. Here. Eugene. Gibson. I am here. Jonai. Brudenchik. Here. Holden. Here. Kalos. King. Present. Ku. Present. Kozlowitz. Here. Lantzman. Lander. Levin. Here. Levine. Here. Mizell. Here. Menchaca. Miller. Here. Moya. Perkins, Powers, here. Reynoso, here. Richards, Present. Rivera, Present. Rodriguez, Rose, here. Rosenthal, here. <laughs> Salamanca, Present. Torres, Traeger, here, Ulrich, Vallone, Van Bramer, Williams, Jaeger, here, Matteo, Combo, Speaker Johnson, Borelli, We have a quorum. We will now have today's invocation, which will be delivered by Reverend Dr. Alan Pickney, Jr. of Butler Memorial United Methodist Church, located at 3920 Paulding Avenue in the Bronx. Please rise. Let us pray. God of love and life, we gather together in this new season to give you thanks for your bountiful blessings and acknowledge you as the guide of our pathway. We thank you for enabling this august body to navigate the political, economic, and social landscape of our city this past year with energy, enthusiasm, effort, and integrity. As we enter this new year, 2019, we pray that in the midst of their individual concerns, agendas, and objectives, there would be the opportunity for unity and community in the midst of diversity. We pray that love, mercy, justice, and peace will be the motivating factors that direct each member, realizing 
that for such a time as this, what is crucial is courageous, committed, creative, and compassionate leadership. We pray that each member will remain humble as he or she conducts the sacred task of representing the people of New York City who come from all stations of life. You have raised up these persons from various backgrounds to be servant leaders in the hollow halls of this chamber to speak truth authentically, to advocate for the needs of the least, the lost, and the marginalized, and to make a difference in the lives of all New Yorkers. Touch the hearts of all who have been called and given the privilege of being in this leadership responsibility. We pray for wisdom, not foolishness. Real representation, not rhetoric. Mm. Compassion, not corruption. Generosity, not complacency. Humility and not haughtiness. Integrity and not dishonesty. Truthfulness and not trickery and justice for all God's people, not cruelty or tyranny. But most of all, we trust that despite all of our faults, flaws, and frailties, your will shall be done to the glory of God. And now may your spirit guide, reside, and preside over the work of this body. In the name of God, we love and serve. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Dr. Alan Pickney, Jr., who recently just came back from Albany, where he also delivered a prayer over the legislative body. We will now have Council Member King spread the invocation. Good morning, family. Today I call the invocation onto the stated meeting January 24th onto the record 2019. I want to thank Pastor Pickney for coming out today and giving his words of wisdom, guidance, and inspiration. The church that he leads and presides over, he's been at Butler Memorial United Church for, for since 2011 to present. Under his leadership, his congregation continues a renovation project, and we're looking forward to this eight, his 800 members enjoying the church that's being built in our neighborhood. He's a graduate of South Carolina State University with a Bachelor of Science degree in social work. Dr. Pickney received his Master's of Divinity degree from Union Theological Seminary in New York and his Doctor of Ministry at Distinction from Drew, the Drew Theological Seminary in Madison, New Jersey. A community builder, a community activist, a great man, a father, a husband, a great man who moves throughout our neighbor. And I gotta say again, thank you because the first, the first job I had as a youth worker for DYCD summer job was working at Butler Memorial Church when I was years old. And it was a great first experience for me to learn more about work and service for our neighbor. So again, Pastor, I thank you. And we welcome you to City Hall and keep up the wonderful work of being a servant of Christ. Thank you, God bless. Thank you so much. And we will now have the adoption of minutes by Council Member Grodenchek. Thank you, uh, Majority Leader Cumbo. I move that the minutes of the stated meeting of December 11, 2018 be adopted as printed. And this is also a great moment for me because Pastor Pinckney, if he's the same Pastor Pinckney, grew up in Pominock houses with me and I haven't seen him in about 40 years. So we're gonna have a reunion right now on the Florida City Council. So, so. That's great. Wow. Get a room, Barry, get a room. <laughs> Pastor, you're always welcome. Uh, Barry, sit down. <laughs> Thank you for the adoption of minutes, Council Member Grodenchek. Thank you so very much. <laughs> I 
We will now go on to messages and papers from the mayor. None. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. None. Petitions and communications. None. Land use call-ups. M127 through M129, various applications. Uh, coupled on a call, shh. Coupled on a call-up vote, and at this time, I'd ask for a roll call vote on all of today's land use call-ups. We're only voting right now on land use call-ups. Adams. Aye. Ampri Samuel. Aye. Ayala. Aye. Barron. I vote aye. Borelli. Aye. Brannon. Aye. Cabrera. Aye. Chin. Aye. Cohen. Aye. Constantinidis. Carnegie. Deutsch. Presente. Aye. Thank you. Diaz. Mr. Picker, only what? on land use. Yes. Thank <laughs> only you. on land use. Yes. Drum. Aye. Espinal. Aye. Eugene. I vote aye. Gibson. I vote aye. Jonai. Gordenchik. Aye. Holden. Aye. Kalos. King. I don't know. Ku. I don't know. Kozlowitz. Aye. Lanceman. Lander. Levin. Aye. Levine. Aye. Mizell. Uh, with permission, I'd like to vote on all land use co-ops and coupled items on the general order calendar and all resolutions, and I vote yes. Permission granted. Thank you. Menchaca. <laughs> Miller. Aye. Moya. Perkins. Powers. Aye. Reynoso. Aye. Richards. Aye. Rivera. Aye. Rodriguez. Rose. Aye. Rosenthal. Aye. Salamanca. Aye. Torres. Traeger. Aye. Ulrich. Permission to explain my vote? Just kidding, I vote aye. <laughs> Valone. Aye. Williams. Aye. Jaeger. Aye. Matteo. Cumbo. I vote aye. Speaker Johnson. Thank you. Today's land use call-ups are adopted by a vote of 42 in the affirmative and zero negatives. And we will now have communication from Speaker Corey Johnson. Uh, good afternoon. Shh. I want to thank you all for being here with us this Thursday. We have Quiet in the chamber. We have a busy agenda ahead of us this afternoon. But before we begin, I'd like to take a moment to remember NYPD officer Brian Kessler who died in a car crash last Wednesday morning. Brian was 28 years old mm. and had recently graduated from the police academy and was also recently engaged. I'd like to st extend my condolences on behalf of the entire city council to Brian's fiance, Denise, his family, and his friends. He died coming home from work at One Police Plaza. I also want to take a moment to remember the victims of a racist attack on Chinese workers at Seaport Buffet in Brooklyn. Fu Fei Poon, Than Kong Ying, Smat Poon, those are the three individuals who were killed. We just got word about Mr. Poon's death today, this morning. It is a terrible tragedy. Hate has no place in New York City. And I also want to say that this Sunday, January 27th, is the world will pause for International 
Holocaust Remembrance Day. On that day, we'll remember the six million Jews who lost their lives. The scale of destruction and decimation is something we can't even really imagine. One third of the global Jewish population was killed, including 1.5 million Jewish children. The world lost great rabbis and brilliant scholars and beloved synagogues and yeshivas. We will also remember the millions of others who were murdered, people of different ethnicities and religions and sexual orientations. We will never forget the Holocaust and we will teach our children so that history never repeats. The council will vote on a resolution today in an honor of Holocaust Remembrance Day. Let us always remember all of those lives lost in the Holocaust. And now I would ask everyone to please rise and take a moment of silence in honor of Officer Kessler and the other victims that we're remembering today. Thank you all. So we got some uh, big items uh, to share today. First, I'd like to belatedly congratulate one of our assistant deputy directors in the legislative division, Smita Deshmukh, on the birth of her first child, a baby girl, on December 14th. Congratulations to Smita on the arrival of a new beautiful baby. Next, I'm proud to announce that our colleagues, Councilmember Carlos Menchaca and Carlina Rivera, as co-chairs of the Council's newly created 2020 Census Task Force, the newly created task force and the entire City Council are committed to ensuring every New Yorker is counted in the upcoming 2020 Census, while the federal administration continues to undermine and intimidate immigrant communities across the nation, the City Council will do what's necessary to get a complete and accurate count of our population. I know that Council Members Menchaca and Rivera will work diligently to help achieve our goal. Uh, this is open to anyone. Anyone who wants to participate should participate in this task force, and I want to congratulate them both. Now diving into the agenda for today, the Council will vote on the following two Article 11 property tax exemptions, both of which are in Council Member Rodriguez's district. One's located on Sherman Avenue, and the other is located on Fort George Avenue. The Council will vote on the following land use applications, an application to facilitate the preservation of hundreds of units of affordable housing at Waterside Plaza in Councilmember Powers' district. An application, and that's a big deal, that one. He's worked for a very long time, very important uh, building. I want to congratulate Keith on that. And also an application uh, to, uh, uh, to help build 52 units of affordable housing on 3rd Avenue in Councilmember Torres' district in the Bronx. The council will vote on the following legislation. Introduction 1143, sponsored by our finance chair, Danny Drum, would create three new types of payment agreement plans to help low-income homeowners who earn less than $58,400 a year to be able to afford their property taxes and avoid being included in a lien sale. One of the payment agreement plans would give low-income seniors the option to divert some or all of their property tax payments until the property is sold or otherwise transferred, at which point the city would be paid the taxes it is owed through the proceeds of the sale. This is the first time New York City has offered anything like this, and it will go a long way to help seniors on a fixed income. The other two agreements would be available to other low-income homeowners to enter into payment agreements for property tax or Years. The installment amounts will be based on the percentage of their income, and this will help them stay out of default. Affordability is one of the biggest issues that our city is facing, and it's imperative that we come up with creative ways to help people stay here and afford their homes, and this uh, program is one way to do that. I want to thank the staff who worked on this, Rebecca Chasen, Emre Adev, Stephanie Ruiz, Davis Winslow, and Mysis Sarkeesian. I want to thank uh, them all. Uh, introduction 1038, sponsored by Councilmember Barry Grudenchik, would increase the threshold 
for when an income producing property is required to provide a certified statement of income and expense in order to receive an assessment reduction by the tax commission from an assessed value of one million to an assessed value of five million. Going forward, the bill would index this threshold to changes in overall assessed value in class two and class four properties. I want to thank the staff again who worked on this, Rebecca Chasen, Noah Brick, and Macy's Sarkasian. Resolution 673, uh, sponsored by Councilmember Chaim Deutsch, would recognize January 27th, 2019 as Holocaust Remembrance Day and the week beginning on January 27th, 2019 uh, as a citywide week of Holocaust education in New York City. I'm proud the council is acknowledging this incredibly important day, and I want to thank Councilmember Deutsch for this and the staff who worked in it, Harbeni Ahuja. So introduction uh, 897, sponsored by Councilmember Danique Miller, would create additional penalties for commuter van services and van license holders that allow their vans to be operated by a driver without a commuter van driver's license. And I want to thank the staff who worked on that, Elliot Lynn. Uh, Elliot Lynn also helped on introduction 1070 sponsored by Councilmember Francisco Moya, which would require the Taxi and Limousine Commission to make rules regarding financial agreements drivers enter into to obtain for hire vehicles. This has to do with predatory leasing companies. Uh, Councilmember Moya has been working on this since he got to the council. I'm glad we're finally moving this bill today. I also want to congratulate him on a big day yesterday that he had in Albany with the DREAM Act passing. He had championed that for a very, very long time. So congratulations, Francisco. Introduction 1118, sponsored by Councilmember Chaim Deutsch, would require the Department of Veterans Services to submit an annual report to the council and post on its website information about its personnel and the services provided. This report would also include an accounting of the number of veterans who have inquired about the department services, those who have received services from the Department of Veterans Services, as well as how veterans and their families learn about the services provided by the department. I want to thank the staff who worked on this, Nashat Chowdhury, Alex Washington, and Andre of Vasquez. Introduction 1325, sponsored by Council Member Steve Levin, would allow public officials to create standalone trusts to take donations to pay their legal expenses or those of their staff in certain criminal and civil matters. The law would set a donation limit of $5,000 per donor and would place restrictions on who could donate to a legal defense trust. All donations would have to be reported to the Conflict of Interest Board and be posted online. I want to thank the staff who worked on this, Brad Reed, Emily Forgione, Elizabeth Cronk, and Zach Harris. Introduction 1234, sponsored by Councilmember Mark Levine, would create an office uh, for the prevention of hate crimes to coordinate response and outreach among city agencies when hate crimes occur. I want to thank the staff member who worked on this, uh, Maxwell Kampfer, and Maxwell also worked on introduction 1261, sponsored by Councilmember Chaim Deutsch, which require the newly created Office for the Prevention of Hate Crimes to conduct educational, educational outreach and trainings. These two bills are needed now more than ever, these hate crimes bills. 2018 was the safest record, safest year on record in New York City, but at the same time as we had the lowest number of homicides, we had basically the highest number of hate crimes, a huge rise. Our greatest strength as a city is our diversity, which is why I'm looking forward to the council working with this office to help hate crimes from happening and to make sure we have the proper response. Hate has no place anywhere, but especially not here in New York City, the most diverse city in the world. Introduction 542, sponsored by Councilman Rory Lansman, would require the mayor's office to end domestic and gender-based violence to provide individuals receiving services at family justice centers with service satisfaction surveys. The centers would also post a sign about the availability of the surveys in a conspicuous place, and the office would be required to submit to the speaker of the council and post on its website the survey questions and all of the survey data. I want to thank Brenda McKinney, who worked on that bill. Introduction 351, sponsored by Councilmember Helen Rosenthal, would require the same office, the mayor's office, to end domestic and gender-based violence, to submit to the mayor and to the speaker of the council and post on its website an annual report detailing information about the city's domestic violence initiatives indicators and factors. The bill also requires the NYPD to submit an annual report that includes data on chronic domestic violence complaints, chronic offenders, and NYPD outreach efforts to survivors. 
Finally, the bill updates the name of the mayor's office to end domestic and gender-based violence in the administrative code and in the city charter. I want to thank the staff who worked on this, Brenda McKinney and Michelle Lee. Introduction 371, sponsored by Councilman Rafael Salamanca, would require that the mayor's office to end domestic and gender-based violence to conduct outreach to cosmetologists, and that will include trainings, an online toolkit to recognize potential signs of domestic violence in clients, and information about resources for survivors. The mayor's office to end domestic and gender-based violence would also be required to report annually on this outreach. This is a really creative approach to a problem of huge scale in New York City, which is domestic and gender-based violence. Hairdressers and barbers and people who work in nail salons, they are in a unique position to see signs of violence. And I am so glad that Councilmember Salamanca's bill is gonna give them tools and knowledge to help address this issue. I wanna thank everyone who worked on this, including uh, Rafael and his team, as well as Brenda McKinney from our legislative team. Resolution 655, sponsored by Councilmember Danique Miller, would call upon the mayor of the city of New York to grant sick leave to all civilian officers and employees of the city of New York seeking treatment for a qualifying World Trade Center condition. I am really, really glad we are doing this today. Uh, many of the men and women who helped out at Ground Zero after 9-11 ended up sick, and as we hear almost every single stated meeting, when I stand up here and previous speakers have stood up here, week after week we list the names of first responders and firefighters and police officers and EMS workers who have lost their life from 9-11 related illnesses, and it is important and just that anyone who is at Ground Zero receive the sick time that they deserve. Um, so I'm glad we're doing this. I wanna thank the staff who worked on this, Kevin Katowski, and Audrey Son. That is today's agenda. I look forward to proceeding with today's votes. Thank you very much, Madam Majority Leader. We will now move into discussion of general orders. Seeing none, we'll now have a report of special committees. None. Reports of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Finance, intros 1038A and 1143A, property assessments. Amended and coupled on general orders. Preconsidered Reso 722, transparency Reso. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered LU 324 and Reso 728 and LU 325 and Reso 729, tax exemptions. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Four Hire Vehicles, intros 897A and 1070A, commuter vans and four hire vehicles. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Governmental Operations, intro 1325A, Legal Defense Trusts. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Land Use, LU 310 and Reso 730, and LU 311 and Reso 731, Waterside Plaza. Coupled on general orders. LU 312 and Reso 732, Sidewalk Cafe. Coupled on general orders. LU 313 and Reso 733, 4697 Third Avenue. Couple of general orders. Report of the Committee on Public Safety, Intro 1234A and 1261A, Hate Crime. Coupled, amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Veterans, Intro 1118A, Department of Veterans Services. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Women, Intros 351A and 371B, Domestic Violence Reporting and Outreach. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 542A, Service Satisfaction Surveys. Amended and coupled on general orders. On the general order calendar, Intro 720, Site Safety Training. Laid over. Resolution appointing various persons, Commissioner of Deeds. Coupled to general orders, and at this time, I'm asking for a roll call vote on all of the items on today's general order calendar. Williams. Both permission, I'd like to vote on all couple items on the general order calendar and all the resolutions. Permission granted. Thank you. Uh, I'm staying on intro 1325 and intro 897, and I'm voting on all the rest. Congrats to all my colleagues. Kalos. Permission to vote on land use call ups? Permission granted. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Adams. I congratulate all of my colleagues who are passing great legislation today. I do vote aye on all. Ampri Samuel. Aye on all. Ayala. Aye. Barron. I vote aye. Borelli. 
I and all except intro 1325. Brannon. Aye. Cabrera. Aye. Chin. Aye and all. Cohen. Aye. Constantinidis. Cornegy. Avora. Matteo. No on 1325, I and the rest. Deutsch. Permission to explain my votes? Permission granted. Thank you. I'd like to speak on uh, my bill resolution 673. Uh, for the first time, uh, acknowledge International Holocaust Remem Remembrance Day in New York City on January 27th. Additionally, it will establish a city week of Holocaust education, urging educators and parents to broach the subject with the students and children. Growing up as the son of Holocaust survivors, it was ingrained in my identity that my parents had lived through unimaginable horrors, although, like many survivors, I didn't often talk about specifics. Their experiences during the war had a significant impact on our family. Knowledge of the atrocities, atro atrocities that my parents and millions of others suffered through just a generation ago is ever-present uh, in my mind. It is an extremely personal endeavor of mine to ensure that our children and our great and our grandchildren and the future generations never forget what happened during the Holocaust. We all know the saying, those who did not learn history are doomed to repeat it. Baseless hatred, unfounded bias, and anti-Semitism were all factors in what eventually led to the genocide of six million Jews. If we want to equip the next generation with the tools they need to build a peaceful future, then we need to educate them about the consequences of prejudice and mistreating others. One of the most frightening surveys to come out in the last few months indicated that 66% of American millennials don't know what Auschwitz is. Furthermore, 31% believe that two million or fewer Jews were killed during the Holocaust, and 45% could not even name one concentration camp. This certainly indicates that we have our work cut out for us. As the generation that lived through the war is dwindling, it is more important than ever that we face this crisis head on. Because it is needed in a crisis, we cannot afford to lose the memories. We cannot afford to let the knowledge of what occurred to be forgotten. I thank my co-sponsors on this bill and my fellow members for the working together to ensure that this important outreach is done throughout our city. And I encourage my colleagues to vote in support of this critically important resolution. And permission, if I could just uh, speak about my intro 1261. Briefly. Thank you. Uh, intro 1261. The rise in hate crimes across our city and country has been an extremely distressing development in recent years. In 2018, hate crimes overall rose by 5% in New York City, and so it is important than ever that we as elected officials take, take a leadership role in promoting tolerance and understanding. Intro 1261 will require the city to do educational outreach and training within our community to educate people about the impact and effect of hate crimes. The bill would require the proposed hate crime prevention office to coordinate with relevant agencies, interfaith organizations, and community groups to implement effective outreach on the subject. In addition, Intro 1261 will also require the Hate Crimes Prevention Office to work with the Department of Education to develop informational material for New York City public school stu students to learn about the consequences of baseless, of baseless hatred. The bill in particular fitting for my district as we experienced a fatal attack just last week on a local family restaurant where three people were killed for one simple reason, they were Asian Americans. Our city is a melting pot, home of New Yorkers from 150 different countries. We speak more than 80 different languages, and 40% of New Yorkers are immigrants. Mutual respect and understanding of people with different ethnicities, religions, and belief systems can go a long way towards creating a more peaceful, tolerant New York City. So I want to thank once again all my colleagues, and uh, thank you very much. And how do you vote? I vote, uh, I vote no on 1325, and I in the rest. Thank you. Thank you. Diaz. Yes, I'm all. Drum. Aye. Espinal. Um, I vote aye on all. Eugene. I vote aye. Gibson. Permission to briefly explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I'd like to 
um, congratulate all of my colleagues today who are passing very important legislation, particularly want to recognize Councilmember Deutsch and Councilmember Levine for the recognition of the rise in hate crimes in this city and to ensure that we continue to create safe spaces in our city where no one feels discriminated against. And I appreciate these two pieces of legislation that will not only provide more educational outreach, but will truly establish a separate individual office um, of the prevention of hate crimes. And I think it's a very important piece of legislation considering the climate in which we're living and working in today. So I wanted to congratulate my two colleagues. I will be voting aye on all, and I wanted to take a point of personal privilege as a former assembly member with our colleague, Council Member Francisco Moya, joining the speaker in congratulating Council Member Moya on the historic and incredible passage of the New York State Dream Act. Um, as a former assembly member, when it was introed in 2011, I proudly voted yes every year, and many of us did not believe that this day would come when we would have such a collaborative fashion where both houses in Albany agreed that the New York State Dream Act is the best possible mechanism and pathway of success for so many dreamers across this city that desire to obtain and achieve a quality higher education. So I'm so proud of Council Member Moyer for the great job he did, and I look forward to working with him on many other issues, and I vote aye on all. Thank Thank you. Thank you so much, and congratulations, Council Member Moya. Jonai. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. On intro 1325, supportive, I uh, would hope that, and I'll be introducing legislation or an LS request that will extend the Legal Defense Trust to allow us to be plaintiffs in legal actions moving forward. Uh, in um, retrospect to uh, the resolution on remembering the Holocaust, I just want to remind everyone that during the dark times, Albania was that one country that not a single Jewish life was lost and actually more Jews lived there after World War II than before the World War began. Uh, in remembrance of that, this January 31st at the United Nations, we will be hosting an event alongside many community leaders and organizations, the rescue of Jews in Albania during the Holocaust will be held at the United Nations on January 31st, inviting all of you to attend. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Gordon Chick. Uh, with thanks to my colleagues for indulging my reunion with Reverend Pinckney after 46 years, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Holden. Aye on all. King. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. Um, quickly, I am voting all on all, um, but I want to say for Reso 655, um, it's something that we all should be supporting in every way we can after it leaves these halls, urging the administration to support this resolution because our first responders, everyone who came and saved the life, who endured all the horrific actions of 9-11, they should not be worrying about whether or not they're able to provide for their families, have a meal, or get health care because they don't have unlimited sick time. We've got to do the right thing by the people who saved lives on that day, and we're ask I'm asking everyone Please lend your voice to the administration and let them know we need to act swiftly on this. Too many people are dying, too many families are falling apart just because they don't have the proper sick time to take care of their health and their families. And I vote aye on all. Thank you. Ku. Aye. Kozlowitz. Lanceman. Aye. Lander. Request permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank you very much, Madam Majority Leader. Um, I'm voting aye on all today, including intro 1325, and I'm not shying away from my support for this bill sponsored by Councilmember Levin. I, I think it's the right thing for us to be doing, and I do want to explain why. I am so proud to sit in this chamber today along with Councilmember Debbie Rose, who I believe is really the epitome of a council member with integrity and decency and who does things uh, right. As some of you may remember, she was targeted for what I believe were political reasons for a completely bogus prosecution. And bogus is a kind word. If you get me off the floor, I'll tell you what I really think. Um, that the judge at the end of the day found completely unwarranted and dismissed every single charge. We, the people, spent $500,000 of our tax money on that prosecution. That prosecutor we paid for with public funds 
to prosecute a totally bogus case against her. And if we're going to say we're going to use public funds to prosecute you, but not only will we not pay for your defense, we won't even allow you to fundraise legitimately for your defense, I really think would be inappropriate and irresponsible. So I think 1325 is the right thing to do, and I, I think there's been some controversy and people are kind of slinking away from it. I thought it was better to stand up and explain why I think it's the right thing to do. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Levin. Vote aye on all. Levine. Madam Majority Leader, permission to briefly explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you very much. I will be voting aye on all, and particularly I'm excited about intro 1234, which would establish mayoral office to combat hate crimes. We have an alarming rise in the number of hate crimes, not just nationally, but here in New York City, beginning almost precisely at the start of the 2016 presidential election. And we need to up our response to this scourge by doing what we've done for other ch challenges the city has faced, whether it is the battle against domestic violence, uh, coordinating film production, or even planning for resiliency. And that is create a mayoral level office which can bring together every city agency that needs to work in concert in combating this challenge, not only the NYPD, but the Department of Education for curriculum to uh, to um, teach tolerance, um, the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene, who can provide counselors in the wake of these incidents, um, the Human Rights Commission, which has a mandate for uh, promoting intergroup relations, Community Affairs Unit, which is responsible for outreach to different ethnic and religious communities around the city, and a number of other agencies, which, thanks to this legislation, will be coming under the umbrella of a single mayoral office for the prevention of hate crimes. Um, I want to thank the chair of the Public Safety Committee, Donovan Richards, for his support of this measure, the chair of the City Council's Jewish Caucus, Chaim Deutsch, who has also been instrumental in this passage, and want to urge my colleagues to vote yes again on intro one, two, three, four. Thank you. Menchaka. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. Uh, I, I rise to say thank you to my colleagues for a lot of their legislation, whether it's hate crimes or domestic violence. Uh, I think that we have created some incredible, innovative uh, laws. I do, though, rise with some uh, incredibly conflicted and mixed feelings about 1325A. They're mixed because it is con um, connected to uh, people we know and people that we fought next to, uh, and, and I want to join in, in the words described and the feelings that Brad Lander gave about the atrocious, uh, disgusting uh, legal battles that our colleague Debbie Rose went through and her staff. Uh, that should have never happened, and I will continue to fight for anyone uh, that is in that situation. Unfortunately, this bill creates a lot of conflict for me because it's come up really quick, uh, and I'm feeling uncomfortable about how, how it's landed. Uh, I think the, uh, the pieces, and I'll, I'll talk later about some of the pieces of the bill, but unfortunately, this bill both brings an opportunity for compassion for someone that we care about and that we will fight for, and Debbie, we're with you, uh, but it also brings opportunity for corruption for folks that are not too far away from this, this space here who I think will use it in the unfortunate nature of corruption. Um, I think that we need to solve this problem, and I do not think this bill is going to do that uh, holistically. I vote no on 1325A, and I and the rest. Thank you. Thank you. Miller. Permission, permission to explain my vote? Permission please. granted. Thank you very much. Um, today, this body will vote on legislation that builds on regulation structure of 2017, 2017 Commuter Van Safety Act, which has regulated the growth of commuter van industry, stiffened penalties for road commu commuter van operators, and requires yearly reporting on commuter van, commuter van safety. 897 will demand real accountability for companies and vehicle owners by expressly prohibiting anyone not licensed to operate these vehicles or ever get behind the wheel again. Failure to, to, to adhere with this stipulation will initially result in a penalty of $500, temporary suspension, a one-year probation. 
A second violation will result in revocation of holders of license as well as mandatory 15-day suspension. A third such violation within that period will result in suspension of service and revoking of licenses. While dollar vans are a, a popular mode of transportation in communities throughout the city, yeah. they continue to be plagued by nagging safety concerns, unsafe commute for unsafe for commuters, um, and different from the traditional transportation that we come to expect. On two separate occasions, a 15-year-old in my district was arrested by NCO officers for operating a legally uh, licensed commuter van. Other public, well publicized incidents within the industry include violence, sometimes deadly disputes between rival drivers and companies, fatal collisions and other motorists, as well as pedestrian high speed chases while fleeing unlawful uh, or lawful summonses. Mm -hmm. This is the type of criminality that we have ex come to expect. And this legislation will certainly address. Despite possessing the authority to regulate dollar van com companies, the TLC continues to experience serious challenges in the efforts to rein in the unlawful activity, making legislation vital to, to strengthening the root and being able to root out these bad actors. And we will continue to advocate to target th this senseless uh, behavior amongst oper uh, these operators and look forward to the passage of this legislation today. I want to thank the speaker for, for supporting this and, and Reverend Diaz and the uh, for hire vehicle um, for, for moving you. this forward as well. And look forward to my colleagues voting in the affirmative. Thank you. Thank you, council member. Moya. Permission to explain my vote, uh, Madam Majority Leader? Permission granted. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to talk about uh, this bill that uh, will provide for hired drivers with uh, consumer protections that they need not just to survive in this city, uh, but to thrive in it. Intro 1070A will allow for the creation of a driver's bill of rights that provides a clear, plain language explanation of their lease, rental, or conditional purchase agreement. Uh, this will prevent predatory lessers from overwhelming for hire drivers with mountains of paperwork that confuse bad deals like subprime leases. Uh, this bill was inspired by the unscrupulous behavior of certain companies that steer drivers into subprime loans. Uh, those deals effectively handcuffed drivers to steering wheels of financial sinkholes. And just the other day, I heard about a driver who was offered a lease on a, two, uh, a 2018 Toyota Camry. The deal was $994 down, $369 a week for 42 months. Uh, that driver would end up spending about $65,000 for a car that cost about a third of that. And after all that, the driver will never own it. Working class drivers cannot get ahead if they're preyed on like this. This legislation is centered on protecting drivers at a time when they are in, fi in dire financial positions, too often pushing them to a grave and tragic decisions. I will continue to work hand in hand with the TLC to make sure drivers are protected from predatory dealers. Uh, I also want to take this opportunity to thank the Independent Drivers Guild for their support in this effort to protect drivers. I want to thank the speaker uh, and all of my colleagues, uh, and I will be voting uh, in the affirmative. Thank you. Thank you. Powers. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. Uh, well, I want to thank the speaker for his kind words earlier. I am here to speak in support of uh, Waterside Plaza, which is a land use item on the calendar today that we're voting for. I want to um, welcome as well, I see her up in the, in the rafters there, the Tenants Association President, Janet Handel, who for the last year has been working with myself and the management of Waterside and HPD to come up with a deal that would preserve uh, the long-term affordable housing at Waterside Plaza. Waterside is a wonderful community that was a former Mitchell Lama and like many exited, leaving the tenants uncertain about their future and with high rents as a result. Um, in the last year, we have spent uh, uh, many hours together trying to fight to preserve and reduce and address the high rent burden at uh, Waterside. And today we've gotten uh, to a place where I think all the residents can be happy because in one way or another, their lives are gonna be much better and their home will continue to be their home for the future and th those units will be uh, held as affordable for 75 years. So uh, I'm very proud of this. It was the first Euler that I had come through my, uh, through my office. I really am appreciative of Janet and all the tenants. 
uh, for their work to, uh, to improve their community and help their community. Dick Ravitch, a former lieutenant governor who um, was the, the landlord there and, and worked very closely with us to make sure that we uh, addressed all the issues at hand. And I want to thank my staff as well, Emily, Ben, and the others who have put in a lot of hours to make sure that the residents' concerns and their calls get addressed and that we come up with a deal that really gets to the heart of the matter here. So I'm very proud to cast a vote, I, for that and for all the items here as well today. And um, thank you to Janet and all the water site tenants for all your work. Thanks so much. Thank you. Reynoso. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. Uh, in recognition of the Holocaust Remembrance Day, I also want to recognize uh, the work that the Dominican Republic did as a country, one of the few countries that actually um, accepted refugees uh, from, uh, from uh, Germany. Um, I uh, just want to make sure that we recognize that and also the fact that Rafael Espinal is the founder of the uh, Holocaust Survivors uh, Initiative that we also do in the City Council. And um, we're all here in unity uh, uh, and want to make sure that uh, we recognize that as well. I also want to thank all my colleagues uh, for the legislation that was passed today and I have an eye on all. Thank you. Richards. Uh, permission to briefly explain my vote. Permission granted. All right, thank you. Uh, hate crimes against black, Jewish, and LGBT New Yorkers are on a rise across our city, which is why intros 1234A and 1261A to create an office for the prevention of hate crimes are so important. We have to get proactive in our approach to stopping the spread of hate, fear, and ignorance, and we need more than just a law enforcement answer to these issues. We need to educate our youth early and often on the devastating effects of racism to help spread the word that an attack on one of us is an attack on all of us. With that being said, I'd like to thank Speaker Johnson and both of my colleagues, Mark Levine and Chaim Deutsch, and my legislative counsel, uh, Daniel Adis, for all of their work to helping us bring this office to fruition and educating our young people. I'd also like to congratulate Danique Miller on a much needed bill. Um, while, you know, I use dollar vans coming up, um, they helped me get through college actually, get home at least in an appropriate hour. Um, we know that there are a lot of public safety issues related to the way uh, dollar vans operate in the outer boroughs especially. Um, so his bill is going to really bring solace to a lot of individuals injured. I unfortunately had a hit and run in my district where we lost someone uh, last year or two years ago um, to one of these vans. Um, so it's not to target the industry to say they're not needed, um, but we need to make sure that there's certainly more oversight on them and more penalties um, in their licensing if they can't get their acts together. So with that being said, uh, congratulations to Nick and I vote aye. Thank Re you. Rivera. I vote aye, one all. Rivera. Aye. Rodriguez. Permission to explain a vote? Permission granted. And first of all, as my colleague Antonio Reynoso said, for me as a immigrant, Dominicans born and raised in the Caribbean, we know what it was for to get our island, the Hispaniola, to open the door to the Jews when no other country, including the United States, it, were welcoming the Jews. So when we voted this resolution on the Holocaust, for me, it's important because our life as someone that Immigrants, we've been living hate crimes uh, experience. We've been living many cases of being discriminated also because of the accents, because of the status quo that we have. But I also feel that someone that represents Northern Manhattan having Yeshiva University, where I've been working for the last 10 years as a council member, and as a previous year as a teacher, a co-founder school in my district, we know how important it is to teach our students to teach our New Yorkers that when someone is on the attack, the whole city and the whole nation is on the attack. So for me, it's a day where we had to use this opportunity to support this resolution, but also to send a message loud and clear that it doesn't matter which group is in the attack in the nation, in the world, we always will stand together. So with that, I vote aye. Thank you. Rose. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank you. I want to take this time to once again thank my colleagues for your overwhelming support and conviction to right an egregious wrong. I want to thank you for voting affirmatively for intro 1325A. 
I know that many of you had ambivalent feelings about who the beneficiaries of the bill could be. But I thank you for lifting this sword of Damocles, which has hung over my head for almost a decade. Your vote has freed me from the stigma of an unwarranted prosecution and will allow me to pay off my legal debt to the very excellent legal counsel who defended me and my staff members through this frivolous and bogus, and that's Council Member Landa's word, lawsuit. I want to thank all of my colleagues for voting for this bill today. Thank you. And I vote aye. Congratulations, Council Member Rose. This is a huge step and many miles to go. Thank you. Rosenthal. I vote aye and all. Salamanca. Aye and all. Torres. Permission to vote on land use call ups? Permission granted. Uh, aye on all land use call ups, and I will vote aye and I'll vote reluctantly for intro 1325A. So in light of Councilmember Rose's speech. So. Thank you. Traeger. Aye. Ulrich. I vote aye on all, um, with the exception of uh, intro 1325A. Vallone. Aye on all. Jaeger. Aye. Combo. I proudly vote aye, and I congratulate all of my colleagues. I also want to give special congratulations to Councilmember Chaim Deutsch for a successful legislative state of day today, passing two hate crime bills, the Veteran Reporting Bill and the resolution recognizing January 27, 2019 as a Holocaust Remembrance Day. So many are appreciative of the incredible work that you have done to continue to shine light on this critical day um, in world history. Thank you, and I proudly vote aye. Speaker Johnson. Councilmember Lander. Request permission to vote aye on all of the land use call ups. Permission granted. Vote aye. Thank you. Thank you. All right, all items on today's general order calendar are adopted by a vote of 48 in the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions. With the exception of intro 1325A, which was adopted by a vote of 42 in the affirmative, five negative, and one abstentions. And in intro 897A, which was adopted by a vote of 47 affirmative, zero negative, and one abstention. The revised land use call up vote is 48 in the affirmative and zero negative. We will now have an introduction and reading of bills. All bills have been referred to committees as indicated on today's agenda. We will now move into the discussion of resolutions. Are there any members who wish to speak on any of today's resolutions? We have Council Member Danique Miller, and we will begin with him at this time. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Today we will vote to adopt Reso 655, which calls on the mayor to grant sick leave to all city civilian officers, employees seeking treatment for qualifying World Trade Center conditions. Of the city's, city's nearly 60,000 employees that responded to that fateful attack on 9-11, who were registered with the World Trade Center Health Registry, over nearly 5,000 of them are civilian workers. The uniformed members of our municipal workforce, such as FDNY, NYPD, Corrections and Sanitation, receive unlimited line of duty sick time in order to seek treatment for this qualifying World Trade Center event and condition. But other city employees, such as EMTs, laborers, engineers, transit workers, and others, do not receive this benefit. Last year, Governor Cuomo signed into law a bill that provides unlimited sick leave for non-New York City municipal officers and employees with qualifying World Trade Center uh, conditions. But a similar state bill that would have benefited our own New York City civilian workforce was blocked by the city. 
Only recently did the administration agree and agree be, enter into an agreement with two unions to give unlimited retroactive sick leave to nearly 2,000 employees. That leaves many others outside waiting to receive this benefit. Some of these civilians, meanwhile, continue to wait for their sick leave entitlements. They miss work prematurely. They retire in order to seek sick, sick treatment for their ailments. And others just simply wait and never get it at all. Offering our dedicated men and women of New York City's workforce who went above and beyond the 9-11, the sick leave that they need and for their deadly and debilitating illnesses they are suffering from should not be subject to collective bargaining. It should be a matter of principle and humanity. I urge the administration to heed the call and ask my colleagues to join us in the cry and vote in the affirmative. Thank you. Thank you so much, Council Member Miller, for that very important uh, resolution. I'll now read today's resolutions into the record. Members who wish to vote against or abstain on any of these resolutions should register your vote with the clerks at the dais. I'm going to begin with resolution 655, a resolution calling upon the mayor of the city of New York to grant sick leave to all civilian officers and employers of the city of New York seeking treatment for a qualifying World Trade Center condition. All in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. Now go on to resolution 673B, an amended resolution recognizing January 27th, 2019 as Holocaust Remembrance Day and the week beginning on January 27th, 2019 as a citywide week of Holocaust education in New York City. All in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? The ayes have it. We will now move into- uh, Madam, Madam Majority Leader, yes. I'd ask just for a moment before we move into general discussion, if that's okay. Sure. Uh, I was uh, remiss and, and of course, uh, it was a very, very busy week for all of us, especially Monday, mm -hmm. which was uh, the remembrance of King Day. Uh, MLK's birthday, and many of us participated in events across the city. I started the morning with you, Madam Majority Leader, and uh, Congressman Jeffries at BAM out in Brooklyn for one of the largest celebrations of Dr. King's life. And then I went to Convent Baptist Church in Harlem, the House of Justice, hosted by Reverend Sharpton, and then I ended at St. Mary's Episcopal Church in Fort Greene, and it was a moving and beautiful day, uh, you know, we hear a lot of quotes from Dr. King, uh, and many of us could probably give our favorite, but the one that was most resonant for me on this King Day was when Dr. King said, our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. And I feel like we as a council have not been silent about things that have mattered, uh, not just this past year, but during our time here in this body. and with everything that is happening in this country, it is important, but also maybe a little too easy for us to talk about the national issues that are uh, facing uh, our city and facing the country. But I think it is uh, equally as important and just as right to talk about the deep issues that face our city every single day, whether it's uh, deep income inequality or crumbling public housing, uh, authority or subways that are collapsing, schools not getting the support they need, uh, women not being treated equally, all of these issues are issues that still are alive and well in our city. And so uh, King Day is an opportunity to recommit ourselves to social and economic justice, to hold the mirror up, to look in it, and to be brutally and rigorously honest with ourselves about the challenges that we still must meet in the day that we're living in. And so. Uh, MLK's birthday should not be about one day a year about talking about economic and social justice, but it's a reminder and hopefully a recommittal of the work that we must do over the course of a year. And so, Madam Majority Leader, I was really proud to be with you in your district at the Brooklyn Academy of Music uh, in the morning and to spend the entire day at beautiful ceremonies all across the city talking about Dr. King's life 
and also talking about the work that is still yet to do in this country and in our city. And so uh, I want to uh, formally, of course, recognize uh, the birthday and the remembrance of Dr. King and uh, say what a special and beautiful a day it was for me and I'm sure for many of you who participated in celebrations. And with that, I give it back to you for general discussion. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you, and I appreciate Speaker Johnson's uh, participation in MLK Day, um, and so proud of this body that we continue to not only talk the talk, but to walk the walk each and every day, and so proud to be a part of this body. We will now move into general discussions, and we will begin with Council Member Ben Kalos, followed by Council Member Rivera, and then followed by Council Member Amprey Samuel. Uh, thank you. I um, call my colleagues' attention to introduction 1353 mm -hmm. relating to sidewalk sheds and scaffolding inspections. Mm -hmm. Scaffolding there is to protect us from falling buildings, but what's going to protect us from the falling yeah. scaffolding? Cabrera. The 349 miles of scaffolding covering New York City has begun collapsing on the residents it's meant to protect. Currently, the law allows scaffolding to be self-certified for safety by the contractors who install it without any independent inspection by the city's Department of Buildings. Under this legislation, scaffolding that has been up would be inspected when it is installed and every three months thereafter with escalating penalties in hopes of finally getting the scaffolding down. I'd like to thank my colleagues, council members Adams and Chin, who represent districts where scaffolding has fallen, as well as council member Amprey Samuel, chair of the Committee on Public Housing, which is where, and, and our NYCHA developments are so surrounded it. They are all co-prime sponsors of this legislation. I ask you uh, to please sign on. Thank you. Thank you. We will now call on Council Member Rivera. <clears throat> thank you so much. Today I want to thank Speaker Corey Johnson for choosing me to co-chair the Council's 2020 Census Task Force along with co-chair Carlos Menchaca. Our democracy depends on a full and accurate count of our nation, and while the Trump administration is working to compromise that mandate, our task force will fight back to protect immigrant communities and provide resources to ensure that everyone is counted. We will stop, we will work to stop the president's anti-immigrant question on citizenship, push our city and state leaders to commit serious financial resources and get the message out about how the census affects everything from federal dollars to New York projects to our representation in DC. As someone who grew up in Section 8 with a single mother relying on federal programs like WIC, I know firsthand how much cuts to key benefits can affect our diverse and wonderful immigrant and minority communities. I look forward to working with my task force co-chair on this critical effort, and I encourage the rest of the council to join us as our work begins. I just want to also bring up a piece of legislation I'm introducing today. Um, it's, it has to do with animal rights, intro 1378. It would prohibit the sale or offer for sale of foie gras made from force-fed birds. Now, I like upscale dining as much as the next person. <laughs> But this is egregious cruelty that is outside the bounds of acceptable conduct in our society, and that should include the force feeding of birds to cause their livers to expand 10 times their normal size, all for a luxury project product that is sold in less than 1% of New York City restaurants. So as someone who worked on the council's legislation to ban exotic animals and circuses, and I introed wild bird protection legislation just last year, I know this body understands that animal cruelty has no place in our city, and I encourage my council colleagues to sign on to this important piece of legislation. I want to thank voters for animal rights and the Humane Society of the United States for working with my office on this bill. And if you have any questions, please reach out to my staff. Thank you. Thank you, and congratulations to both of you and Councilmember Menchaca. I'm sure you all will be a dynamic duo. Thank you so much. And now we're going to call on uh, Council Member Amprey Samuel, followed by Council Member Adams, followed by Council Member Barron. Thank you, Majority Leader Lori Cumbo and Speaker Corey Johnson. On Monday, we celebrated the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and how much he contributed to civil rights, social justice, economic, economic justice, and just recognizing the humanity in each of us. With New York City known around the country and the world as one of the most progressive cities in our nation, we need to acknowledge where there is still room for improvement and to do something about it. 
I want to remind everyone of a tragic incident that occurred in December when the mother who was carrying her one-year-old child was harassed and assaulted while sitting in the waiting area of an HRA office in Brooklyn, simply responding to an erroneous letter that wrongfully terminated her child care. This mother was subjected to inappropriate wait times at a city agency and was subjected to and the victim of aggressive use of force by HRA peace officers and members of the NYPD, all because every single authority figure in the center that day lacked compassion, respect, and a total disregard for basic human dignity. Instead of prioritizing families who are in the middle of a crisis or traumatic experience, the city of New York wanted to kick a mother and her child out into the street we have got to do better. We all saw the video. We witnessed a one-year-old baby being forcibly yanked from the arms of his mother. And on top of that, the NYPD added insult to injury when they decided to charge the mother with child endangerment. I was devastated when I saw the video and outraged about the steps that were taken. We all stood on the steps of City Hall and demanded her immediate release from Rikers Island and that charges be dropped. That all happened. But what are we doing to prevent that from happening again? Today, we are introducing a package of bills to help create a respective and supportive environment for families who visit HRA offices across the city. Intro 1335 will require HRA centers to have social workers on staff. Intro 1337 will require HRA offices have adequate space for children of all ages. And intro 1336 will, inquire, will require and ensure staff and contractor staff are trained on de-escalation tactics and trauma-informed care. I'll be right, I'll be finished in a second. I believe these bills will address the level of disrespect, demoralizing, and demeaning treatment within HRA offices and get to the heart of how people are treated, which is truly working in the spirit of Dr. King's legacy. Thank you. Thank you, members of this body, for listening. And I ask that everyone support these package of bills. Thank you. Thank you so much and certainly stand in support with you. Council Member Adams, followed by Council Member Barron, followed by Council Member Gibson. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I echo every single word that was just spoken by my colleague, Ampri Samuel. After the disturbing treatment of Jasmine Headley at an HRA office in December, I am very proud to introduce intro 1333 with Council Member Levin. This bill will require the HRA to issue a quarterly report on any use of force incidents that occur within an HRA office. After the unfortunate escalation in the case of Jasmine Headley and so many others, we must take steps to ensure that this never happens again. The goings-on inside of HRA offices in the name of law and order are in desperate, overdue need of reform. Vulnerable New Yorkers, a young working mother in this case, go to HRA offices for help and should not have to second guess how they will be treated. This bill, this package of bills, they are necessary steps to improve accountability and transparency. This agency must improve their policies and protocols to prevent future trauma from meeting families in need. So I ask, we ask, and encourage and thank our colleagues in advance for signing on to this important piece of legislation, this important package of legislation. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Barron, Council Member Gibson, followed by Council Member Levin. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. In 1962, Dr. Martin Luther King was labeled by the FBI as the most dangerous man in America. In 1967, following his pronouncement against the U.S. involvement in the war, in the Vietnam War, that targeted criticism of Dr. Martin Luther King expanded to include critique by national organizations, civil rights groups, uh, and he was ostracized, ridiculed, and condemned, and in his words, felt betrayed by many contemporary civil rights leaders, including some within his own inner circle, and black and white clergy for his criticism of the president who had signed the civil rights legislation. Today, with hindsight, those who engage in the battle for social justice and civil rights and people of goodwill see clearly that Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King was a man of commitment, conviction, and courage. He was a visionary who thought about matters beyond the immediacy of his initial advocacy 
and dared to venture beyond the local and national injustices of the day and to speak out against the evil tentacles, oh boy, of evil tentacles of uh, militarism perpetrated by the United States in, and that claim the lives of innocent people in foreign lands. Now, let's see if my technology is gonna help me out here. Okay. Dr. Martin Luther King has a speech. One of his favorite quotes is the one that was cited earlier. But this past Monday, we celebrated what would have been his 90th birthday. And he had a speech in which he made reference to living to be 90. You may be 38 years old, as I happen to be, and one day some great opportunity stands before you and calls you to stand up for some great principle, some great issue, some great cause. And you refuse to do it because you are afraid. You refuse to do it because you want to live longer, you're afraid you'll lose your job, or you're afraid you'll be criticized, or that you'll lose your popularity, or afraid somebody will stab you, or shoot you or bomb your house. Well, you may go on and live until you're 90, but you're just as dead at 38 as you would be at 90. And mm. the cessation of breathing in your life is but the belated announcement of an earlier death of the spirit. And I just want to announce and commend my husband, Assemblymember Charles Barron, who received the Heroism Award from doc, by, of Dr. Martin Luther King by the Baptist Convention of Ministers. Thank you. Thank you, you are a forever educator, and congratulations. Congratulations, Inez, to you and Charles. Great. Council Member Gibson, followed by Council Member Levin, followed by Council Member Powers. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader, and good afternoon once again to all of my colleagues, and I too want to echo many of the sentiments expressed by all of our colleagues in celebrating the life, the legacy, and the labor of love of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who would have been 90 years old. They may have killed the dreamer from the physical presence, but truly his dream lives on. And I think we all collectively as elected officials, I wanna quote our wonderful colleague, Councilmember Adams, when she says, we wake up every day on purpose with a purpose to fundamentally change the way we do business in this city to ensure that every New Yorker has access to resources and programs to live truly a quality of life. And although it sounds easy and it may look good from our perspective, but truly we face those challenges every day. And I too want to call my colleagues' attention to the package of legislation that's being introduced today related to the social services that we provide to New Yorkers in need. And I want to thank Councilmember Steve Levin because when that horrible incident happened last month to Jasmine Headley, we were all outraged. And Councilmember Levin took a very leadership opportunity to stand up and speak out on something that affected far too many people. As an African American, as a woman, certainly we all sympathize with Jasmine. But we all know that there are many other Jasmines in this city. They just have a different name. But they look just like Jasmine and just like myself. And so I am proud to join this collective of colleagues here. I have introed Intro 1350, which is a bill that would require the Commissioner of Social Services to implement the actual recommendations and to address all of the complaints as required under a local law in relation to the implementation of a plan based on its findings of the audit of the department as to how we treat clients that come into our job centers and our SNAP centers. This bill will require the Commissioner of Social Services to make every effort to ensure Thank that you, reasonable Council standards are provided. And I ask all of my colleagues to please add their name to intro 1350. Thank you, Madam Public. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you so much, Councilmember Gibson. We'll now hear from Councilmember Levin, followed by Councilmember Powers, followed by Councilmember Cabrera. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I just want to uh, acknowledge uh, all of my colleagues that have uh, helped put together this package of legislation in response uh, to last month's incident at the HRA Center involving Jasmine Headley. Um, that incident happened right before the holidays. Um, we committed to uh, making sure that we were going to address this through legislation and oversight, and uh, we are doing just that. So I want to thank uh, Councilmembers Gibson, Amphrey Samuel, 
uh, you, Majority Leader Cumbo, uh, Councilmember Helen Rosenthal, Councilmember Adrian Adams, Councilmember uh, our Chair Donovan Richards, Councilmember Heim Deutsch, uh, as well as our speaker, obviously, um, and, the, and the entire legislative staff for putting together a, a very significant package of bills. We're talking about 17 bills here uh, to be heard uh, early next month. Uh, we're examining this issue in earnest, uh, as is our responsibility to every New Yorker that uh, that uh, uh, um, interacts with the HRA system uh, to ensure that they are uh, getting the services that they are entitled to, uh, that they are being treated fairly, that they are being treated equitably, um, and that we are providing the services that every that, that people need uh, in, here in New York City. And so I want to thank my colleagues for standing up. Um, with, such, uh, with such virtue and, uh, and seriousness of purpose to make sure that we're doing everything we can uh, uh, to, to be responsible in this instance and, and in the future. Um, and uh, secondly, I just want to um, also call my colleagues' attention to intro 1354, which I'm introducing today, which is uh, regarding um, the use of psychiatric medication to youth in foster care, which I think is uh, very prevalent, but we don't have a clear picture of. So please uh, consider signing on to intro 1358. And lastly, I just want to acknowledge uh, the passing of Jonas Mikas yesterday at age 96. Jonas uh, 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 founded um, Film Culture and Anthology Film Archives on the corner in, um, in Councilman Rivera's district on 2nd and 2nd, um, which are, are New York establishments and a real part of New York City culture uh, and the arts. Um, uh, he was a real uh, 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 giant of, of New York City culture, and uh, he will be sadly missed, but a, 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 wife, a life well lived. Thank you. thank you so much, Councilmember Levin, and thank you so much for your leadership in putting together this strong package of bills. I want to call on now Councilmember Powers, Cabrera, and finally, Councilmember Menchaca. Thank you. I'll be brief. I was just remiss earlier to uh, not say thank yous to two other groups in the Waterside deal. And one is my predecessor, Dan Garodnik, who I think is or was watching, who actually kickstarted the conversation. I'm very grateful for his leadership. And also to the um, HPD, who really worked very hard. They deserve the thank you. I want to make sure they received it as well. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Powers. And now we'll hear from Councilmember Cabrera. Thank you so much. Today I'm introducing one bill and four resolutions that would discourage tobacco use, support civil, civic engagement, discourage false reporting of incidents for hate crime purposes, and eliminate an undue burden on home buyers of modest means. Intro 1345 closes the fl flavor tobacco loophole. Current law prohibits sale of tobacco flavors that are attracted to use, such as fruit flavors, but allows the sale of winter green and menthol flavors. This bill will prohibit sale of menthol winter green flavored tobacco, making it illegal of all, the sale of all tobacco flavors in New York to discourage tobacco consumption. Wrestle 719 and 720 call on the state and federal governments to make election day a state holiday and, and, and a federal holiday respectively to allow more people working, parents and others to get to the polls and vote. Resto 717 calls on the state and the governor to pass and sign legislation that will eliminate the mortgage recording tax which is imposed on New Yorkers who need to borrow money to purchase a home. Those with the ability to pay cash for property avoid paying the tax. This tax is unfamiliar to people of modest means and needs to unfair, I'm sorry. This tax is unfair to people of modest means and needs to be eliminated. And then uh, Resto 718 calls on the state and the governor to pass and sign uh, Senate Bill 9149, the 911 Anti-Discrimination Act, which will add first, second, and third degree false reporting to the list of charges eligible for hate crimes sentencing. I encourage everyone to join me and sign on to these measures as co-sponsors. Thank you. Thank you. And now we'll hear from Councilmember Menchaca, who will close us out. All right. Here we are. Thank here you, are. colleagues. I'm ready. I'm ready. Uh, census 2020. My hermana and I have a big task ahead of us. Uh, Carlina Rivera and I are going to be really joining with all of you to ensure that we get this right. No one knows our neighborhoods better than us. 
The census is more than just a simple count of persons. It determines the very identity of our city. Whatever the census says about us will be interpreted as the reality of our needs for the next decade. And if we don't get this count right, thousands of people will fail to get food and health care, education, and housing that they are entitled to. And we as people will fail to get the adequate representation in Congress to fight policies we cannot enact on our own. The possibility of a citizenship question in the census only underscores the urgency of getting this count right, as well as the need to ensure our immigrant communities are counted. In 2015, New York State received $53 billion for programs, and this accounted for approximately a third of the state spending on Medicaid, Medicaid, Medicare Part B, Section 8 housing, Title I grants, highway planning and construction, SNAP. In effect, every person that fills out the census, New York State has allocated about two to three thousand thousand dollars of critical welfare and all of you members are going to be part of this because you know your districts more than anything and I'm thinking about participatory budgeting where we had a hundred thousand in the last two years vote we can make this happen because we've been thinking about this and connecting intimately with our communities at every corner and I know that there's a new census commissioner but all we have to do is think about IDNYC rollout close Rikers and fair fares this administration can screw things up we cannot screw this up. This is a priority for us at the City Council, and I'm determined with our chair and the speaker to make this right. Are you with me? Yeah. Colleagues, are you with me? Are you with us? Okay, si se puede, thank you. Thank you for the call and response. We may <laughs> take that to the steps of City Hall in the future. And we will now have uh, closing remarks by Speaker Corey Johnson. The stated meeting of January 24th, 2019 is hereby adjourned. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you.